I can do the okay. prayer if nobody else wants. Else wants. So, Heather said she'd do the prayers of the people if nobody else wanted to. I'll do the second lesson if we don't ever volunteer. So, and the goal for the lesson that Heather So we begin then on page five. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Joseph reunites with his brothers, telling them that their evil intent was planned by God's use of Joseph to preserve many lives at the time of famine. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to him, brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me, and they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house and ruler all over the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are four and four years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thank you, God. God. Together now, we prayerfully read Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is this when brothers live together in the community. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard and, and runs down upon the heart of the stroke. It is like the dew of an earth that falls from the hills of the sun. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life for the world. All rights and the gifts of God are irrevocable. So that while well, all have been disobedient, God has mercy upon all. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I asked them, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people who he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So they now have been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Oh, 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this split parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and that is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. for faith to make it a little distinct from belief. And what I have usually said is that when I hear the word belief, I think much more in an, of an intellectual assent to truths that are given, that are revealed. So that, you know, when I say I believe in one God, I believe it because I have, I have uh, the information and I have been taught. So it seems to me to be more up in here. And when I talk about faith, I want to say that faith is my involvement with what I believe. It's my commitment to what I believe. In other words, I put myself all in when I say that I have faith. And the thing I usually use as a distinction is to say the devil believes in God, but the devil has no faith. He has no faith. He is not involved in the life of God at all, but he believes in God. He has to believe in what he's against. 
And so for us, when we hear this gospel today in particular, um, the second portion of it, where this, the, uh, the icon on the front of the bulletin that says Syrophoenician woman, but in Matthew's account, uh, she's called a Canaanite woman. In either event, she is not a Jew. She is a pagan. But something in what she heard about Jesus, something in what she may have witnessed, stirred something in her. And so she comes to him definitely desperate for her daughter, but particularly knowing that what she heard about Jesus has brought her to this place, and now she's throwing herself all in, literally throwing herself at Jesus' feet to beg of him this gift of healing for her daughter. And in Matthew and in Mark, it's Gospels, it's pointed out very clearly how Jesus regards this at this particular moment in his ministry, that this isn't the time for him to be dealing with people who are not of the Jew. But nevertheless, here is this moment where now the teaching is going to be seen as some, for everybody, that faith is a gift that God can give not just to his chosen ones, his chosen people, but it's a gift that he can give to all. What they do with it, it may be a different thing. But in this case, here is this woman, not of the people of God, but knowing something intuitively even but from Jesus, this inspiration to come to ask and to plead and to basically spar with him verbally you know, by answering him back. You know, even the even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And so Jesus realizes this. Of course, he knew anyway. But what comes out and what he helps his apostles to see and to begin to understand is that the gift of faith can be given to anybody. And that gift of faith can lead to this moment of asking and pleading beyond the boundaries of what was considered acceptable because not only was she a pagan but she was a she and no single woman would ever have been able without causing commotion to speak to a man in public who was not her husband but this woman comes and she comes to Jesus because she has this gift of faith. She's willing to take this risk, give herself totally into this in the hope that he would act and we see that the mercy of God, the compassion of Christ, that his heart is moved, that he does this for this woman. And he doesn't have to go to her. He just says, your daughter is cured. Your daughter will be well. And she was. So this is, again, an invitation to all disciples to take seriously the gift of faith that we have received. And that sometimes, you know, we might hold ourselves back because we're not sure if we can trust God and by that I mean, if I really surrender myself, if I really, you know, go all in on this with Jesus, what's going to change in my life? Am I going to then have to become more prayerful? Am I going to become less, you know, less able to uh, carry on the kinds of conversations or spout the same kind of stuff that I normally have? Uh, because, uh, you know, something is going to be different, demanded from me. My conduct 
maybe the way I look at other people, other races, other, other political views, other religions. How am I going to be different if I really go all in? Do I want to do this? The fact that faith invites us to a, a commitment of self, I think we see also in the first lesson today from the book of Genesis. Now Joseph could have been a real mean vindictive man and he would have been totally justified in taking vengeance on his brothers who sold him into slavery. But because Joseph was a man who already understood the gift of faith, he became a different kind of person in that experience in Egypt. And it wasn't an easy thing that he went through. Don't forget that he gets accused at one point of, of trying to seduce Pharaoh's wife and he gets thrown into prison. And he's there for a long time. And even the people that he thought would help him forgot about him. But eventually, his gifts come to be seen, and Pharaoh not only gets him out of prison and forgets about all that the accusations, but he begins to entrust him with all kinds of authority, power, and dignity. And then what happens is that the insight that he has, this life of faith that he has, even though he's certainly not openly practicing any form of Judaism in the midst of, of Egypt, but yet it was in him, it was there. And so when he finally has this encounter with his brothers, even though he does play with them, read the story, they come and he does things for, for them, um, but then calls them back, accuses them of things. He's doing these kinds of things, but he's just kind of checking them out, seeing what kind of people they really are. But once he comes to himself and realizes what really the truth is, his faith takes over and he becomes this, this great forgiver as well as embracing them and wanting to then bring them all to live in Egypt, which they do. And in salvation history, you know, that time when they move into the, the land of Goshen, where they were to stay because they tended sheep and the Egyptians didn't like sheep for whatever reason. They thought they were terrible dirty, smelly animals. And so these people can have this land as long as they keep their sheep over there. They are there, and they're there for 400 years until then the exodus takes place. But it's the faith that Joseph has in God that leads him to say, you know, you guys thought you were doing me harm, but actually... You were doing a great good because God really wanted you to have me sent here. And God has been able to work through me. And God it is now who is providing a way for you to live. A way for you to continue. A way for this people of his to go on beyond starvation, beyond fear, to know God's providence and care and love and mercy. And so it was that gift of faith that he had that allowed him to make that interpretation when, you know, he could have been a much different person. So for us, here we are. And I just saw in the newspaper this morning um, that King County and Will County are being told that uh, you know, our numbers of coronavirus cases are going up. Yes. And um, 
my immediate reaction was, and I shared it with Joel when I came this morning, was, I sure hope they don't close us down again. And uh, so, you know, it may seem trivial in some way, but nevertheless, I know that I have struggled in dealing with this coronavirus and trying to deal with it from a perspective of faith. You know, we have had to make all kinds of adaptations in our lives. There's still the question about whether people are going to be able to go back to school or not. How many days of remote learning as well as in-person learning, or if there's going to be any in-person learning at all. And then what that does to parents and, uh, and who gets to go back to their work and who has to work from home and all of these kinds of things. Plus, what's if, if we are told that we can't congregate anymore, even the few of us who are here this morning, if we can't congregate anymore until the numbers go down, you know, that's something I don't even want to think about. But yet it doesn't change God's love for us. It doesn't change our faith in Him. It might challenge it, at least it feels challenging to me, to have to deal with all of these different kinds of possibilities. But yet it's the gift of faith that God has given to you, to me, and to countless others that calls us to a response that isn't reacting to fear or to anger or to resentment even though those things can certainly come up as Jesus says uh, in the first part of the gospel today they come out of the human heart but I think that gift of faith that we have if we continue to ask the Lord to stir it up in us and strengthen us and to, to release it in us that even if we have more setbacks, even if we experience other kinds of setbacks in our life, the sickness of a loved one, or the death of someone close to us, or the loss of job, or whatever it might be, that we know that God is still God, and we know that God is with us, and we know that we are invited to be with Him. And that's one of the reasons why we gather here one of the reasons why those who are on Zoom this morning are there, because we all know in our heart of hearts who God is, what it is that God wants from us, and how the Lord invites us to continue on a daily basis to surrender ourselves, to be all in every day, so that we can be sure of the foundation upon which we stand so that we can be assured that we are not by ourselves in any of this and so that we also will know that we can give an example to others that we don't have to become embittered mean-spirited people who because uh, of differences or whatever end up being, you know, against this, against them, against that idea, against this and that doesn't mean that we become incapable of having an opinion, but that we don't, but that we don't become like Joseph could have become, that we become more truly faithful of, um, with the God who has given us this gift, this gift that keeps us going, keeps us growing, keeps inviting us more deeply into the very life of God so that we can give that example to other people. And in the communion that we are able to receive this morning in person, as well as those who will receive spiritually, is that living reminder to us of God with us, of Christ coming to us, 
becoming more truly a part of us, even as we become more truly a part of them. <clears throat> Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that we should see and unsee. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, a light from light, true God from true God, the God of not change, with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified with the bunch of violence, he suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the universe, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The gift of forgiveness surpasses our understanding. It heals relationships and bends our wounds. In thanksgiving for God's unfailing love, we offer our prayer, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. In the company of all the saints, let us pray for Justin of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jeffrey, our bishop, and Mike, our rector, the Scottish Episcopal Church, its primus bishops, clergy, and faithful, Congregations in the Waukegan Deanery, Trinity, Highland Park, Church of the Holy Spirit, Lake Forest, Holy Family, Sagrada Familia, Lake Villa, St. Lawrence, Libertyville, St. Paul McHenry, and our companion diocese of rank South Sudan and Southeast Mexico. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer that the leaders of the nations, especially Donald, the President of the United States, and all federal, state, and local government officials may maintain justice that leads to abundant life for all people. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the humility to receive God's blessings and a willingness to be a blessing to others, especially to those who are lost and afraid, ill without hope of recovery, mentally fragile and without friends, and those who are victims of war, civil unrest, or discrimination. And we pray for all those mentioned in the intention books, on the intercessory prayer list, or in today's bulletin, and others we, wished, we may wish to pray for now. For all those who are fighting fires, forest fires in various parts of the West and Southwest for their protection, for those who are affected by those fires, for their protection and relief. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Wayne Morey, Mark Allen, James Essay Jr., and Haley Van Dyne, who are celebrating birth birthdays this week, Bill and Alice Call, Sue and Fred Braunschmidt, and Mike and Christy Moran, who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week. Are there other birthdays or anniversaries? Let us pray. Lord, for teachers preparing for the school year that is ahead 
that they may be inspired to patiently nurture the minds of those in their charge. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be people of gratitude, giving thanks to God with our whole heart and soul and mind. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may not succumb to the harmful temptations of our culture, the desire to possess things beyond our need, or misuse of intimacy, our reliance on drugs or alcohol to improve our lives and all things that keep us from trusting the power of the Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the dead who have died in the faith of Christ may inherit the kingdom prepared for them, and that those whose faith was known to God alone may receive divine mercy. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Now on the inside and front cover of the bulletin, the prayer for the mission of our church. Loving God, for your grace and us, for the people of Calvary Episcopal Church, to joyfully carry out our mission of growing our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, and we live in the love of the faith. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be right in your will and walk in your days to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
and we are trying this time to make sure that the uh, that the uh, Zoom portion of that uh, will work. Hopefully, it'll be a little better over there than it was uh, at Gavin Coach House. I want to thank publicly all those who worked last Saturday uh, to get rid of a lot of the weeds that decided that they liked our property. Uh, and they were here in abundance. And uh, the process is still going on. Have uh, Andrew Heidegger who will be coming uh, again this week tomorrow to do some further uh, weed removal in the parking lot um, area, particularly in the east parking lot. So that's going on, and uh, we just keep going forward as, as much as we can. Uh, the daily Eucharists uh, are beginning to uh, get attention from uh, different people who aren't comfortable about coming with a larger group but want to come still receive Holy Communion. So I encourage that again Mondays and Thursdays at 545, Tuesday morning at 7, and Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday at 9.30. So, if that meets your schedule and uh, a particular need, especially those of you who are on remotely and you really want to receive Holy Communion, but those are the opportunities uh, during the week that you have. Anyone have announced Joe? Just got something from Heather on the chat. Uh, Oak and Swine are not, is not open on Monday, so. Okay, so. Bocadillos, I guess, if it's open. Or Yemen yeah, Coach House again. Okay. okay. All right. Um, the readers last week, Mark Allen, Bill Call, John Cooper, Dan Bokler, Jessica Murillo, and Eric Kai. And uh, together with uh, Andrew, improving the looks of the place. Um, and again, a big thank you to Susan for uh, the VBS that was done also remotely uh, from the 3rd to the 7th of August. And I understand that it was uh, fairly widely uh, viewed and participated in, so we're glad for that as well. <clears throat> Next Sunday, it's still uh, the plan to have a drive-through blessing of the backpacks at 12.15 p.m. So after this service, and, and people can come and uh, we will give an individual blessing if people remain in their cars um, and uh, probably give you something so you can, uh, you know, prayerfully enter into the school year. I know that the school starts this week, but you just couldn't pull it off that fast. Anything else? Okay, then on page 15, the offertory prayer. At this holy table, O oh God, you share your life with us.
and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we praise you, we bless 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 you, sanctifying them, and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ for the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you, union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power of the glory. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Through the act of spiritual reception for those who are unable to receive in person. In union, blessed Jesus, with the Christian faithful across the world gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and for all and all the blessings of this life. For the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom in unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right path. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. For those who may not be familiar with receiving communion in this fashion, I will come down to the floor level and uh, say to you the body and blood of Christ, and you can answer a letter this and place it into your hands. And then if you're on this side, I ask you to go over that way this side over that way, uh, and as you approach that basket there, that you turn it over, peel the bottom back, and receive the body of Christ, and then for the top, uh, then peel it back to receive the blood of Christ. And once you finish Holy Communion, Please place the empty container and those seals in those baskets that you will see. <coughs>
The prayer after Holy Communion. Let us pray. God of mercy, through this Holy Eucharist, you make us one body of Christ, create us in His likeness here on earth, that we may share in fellowship in heaven, where we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.